Good afternoon, dear guests. It is 4.20, towards the end of the day. You're getting tired. Your legs are tired from walking around on the fair here. And luckily for you, we have just the right solution. Comfortable seats, drinks on the house, great content delivered right to you. You don't even have to move. Uh, what else could you wish for? And great content it is, because I will be talking about PEM fuel cell retrofit solutions for the marine industry. And joining me on stage, a, uh, an expert, I think I can say, from uh, TECO 2030, the head of communications. Can I please get a warm applause for Christian Skyam? Thank you, Joost. Have a seat. All right. So, um, welcome, first of all. Um, it was a short walk for you, luckily, with the booth uh, right over there at the Norwegian uh, Pavilion. Um, so, Teiko, uh, it's, it's a familiar name. I know it's part of a group. Can you tell us a bit about the company? So, Teiko 2030 is developing leading um, PEM fuel cells, stacks and modules for the marine industry. They are bottom-up developed for uh, marine applications and Together with our partners, we have developed a, um, a standard um, concept for retrofitting and new building uh, large shipping vessels. All right, fuel cell systems. And, and we will be getting into that in a bit. First, I'd like to know a bit more about the company because you already mentioned you're working with partners. And I know it's part of a group. So where did the company start? How old are you? Uh, how many employees? Thank you. Uh, uh, so Tico 2030 is a spin-off from Tico Maritime Group. It's a, uh, it's a service provider for maritime ship owners um, and was established in 1994. Us, Tico 2030, we spun out in 2019 and started development of exhaust, exhaust gas cleaning systems for uh, shipping vessels in regards to the global surf, sulfur cap, which came into effect in uh, January 2020. And right after we completed that project, we kicked off another project, a little more ambitious, and that was to develop our own marine-specific uh, PEM fuel cell system. And today we are establishing and industrializing our um, production facility in the northern part of Norway. Uh, we are headquartered in Oslo. We have sales offices in Miami and in Singapore. And our team up in northern Norway are doing a great job in uh, starting up the production and we will start very shortly with manual production, small-scale stacking, before ramping up to more automated production um, as soon as we can next year. All right, started in 2019 and already sales offices all over the world. I can imagine that's a great start there. You already mentioned a bit about your product and that you're ramping up production. Can you tell us a bit more? Yes, of course. So uh, we work with clients all over the world to look into reducing emissions. In 2030, the uh, International Maritime Organization has a goal of reducing global shipping emissions with 40% and from 2008 levels. And this is where we want to um, be a, a contributor. Um, all right. And, and your, your product, you have a, a fuel cell system. Is that fully integrated? Is it just a fuel cell? What, am, what are we looking at? So we have uh, two product lines. We have a PEM fuel cell stack. It's a 100 kilowatt stack um, with non-graphite plates. Because uh, at sea, there is salt water and uh, metal corrodes. So we don't want any corrosion in our stacks. Um, it's, it, and then we assemble the stacks into a 400 kilowatt module where we reduce the footprint of the system to customize it for more shipping applications. And as at least we know, is that real estate on board a vessel is limited. So we want a compact and dense system, which doesn't take up too much space. So we, we have a minimal footprint. We have uh, great dynamic attributes. We have non-metal plates. We, we also have um, twice the power density and lifetime of, or we have twice the power density uh, compared to our market pairs. And we also are, we are um, trying to have a lifetime of 35,000 hours for our system. Um, so that's very briefly on our, the fuel cell specific uh, technicals. Those are some Im impressive specifications indeed. And, and the way you're getting there, it's 
it's your own stack technology as well, right? So you have your own stack technology, and then what else is your own? So we have our own stack technology. We have our own um, module technology, the full balance of plants. Um, and then we're trying to do a kind of a one-size-fits-all approach for the marine space, as they are very energy-intensive applications. So we will modulate the system according to our client's needs um, and reduce the footprint of the system on board the vessel. All right. Yeah, this fully integrated approach is something I'm, I'm hearing more and more of. And uh, I can see where you're coming from with that. Uh, it definitely makes sense. Uh, you, and you already briefly mentioned your production facility in the northern part of Norway. I believe this is going to be huge, right? This is a big thing for you guys. So we <clears throat> went out publicly with um, a that we were searching for a either land or a facility on the eastern part of Norway. And we got an uh, email from the north saying that we can see you're looking for a factory. We have a factory. Bring your coffee machine. Uh, so we sent two guys up to the northern part of Norway the day after. And what met them there was a huge facility, 15,000 square meters, clean room standard. It was home of solar wayfair production back in 2008. And it was basically just bring your uh, cleaning supplies and get started. And here we are trying to um, produce up to 1.6 gigawatt of PEM fuel cell technology by 2030. So we're starting production already in a month's time. It's a very manual uh, start to get familiar with the process, to learn what we're, what we're doing. And then as we get the automated production machines, we will ramp up pretty aggressively, I would say. Sounds good. And I, I do hope you're bringing a good coffee machine. That is important. <laughs> um, we, we've been seeing a ship here in the back all the time. Uh, I'm assuming you are working on the ship. There's also your logo on the bottom. So could you tell us a bit more about that project? Yes, so we um, received 5 million euros from uh, Horizon Europe, EU's funding scheme, to support us on um, creating a concept for retrofit of large vessels. The, the ship you can see behind me is a 6,500 deadweight ton product tanker. It's currently on charter for Shell. It's a Swedish ship owner. We have partnered up with research institutes, with uh, inst installation companies, 3D scanners, naval architects, and also uh, hydrogen tank supplies in order to have the full value chain and bring this uh, project to birth. And we will install 2.4 megawatts of PEM fuel cell technology on deck on this ship. We are not going to, uh, we're just going to connect the system up to existing infrastructure on board. The tanks will be, uh, the, or the hydrogen storage will be at 350 bar compressed uh, hydrogen. And, and the ship will be sailing around in the North Sea already late next year. Um, and we, are, we have already started the project, and we're looking forward to the continuation of it. Yeah, I was going to ask about that timeline. But the end of next year, you said it's already going to be sailing around. OK, yeah, you, you better bring some strong coffee then to that, yeah. uh, that factory of yours. Um, so, and, and I also know we've been talking about this. There are swappable containers on there, right? Um, something that you're developing, I believe, with with your neighbor on the on the Norway uh, platform there. Yeah. So our uh, neighboring stand is actually going to be delivering the swappable uh, compressed hydrogen tanks. Um, so that basically means that when the ship reaches port, empty containers will um, be um, carried off the ship, and we will put on uh, full containers and the ship can, can, can continue sailing. Yeah, that's, that's an interesting development. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to exploring how that, um, you know, the, the standardization of such containers, how that is going to take place, and, and, and what kinds of standards are going to be developed. Do, do you see uh, a responsibility for, for you as well in creating such a standard and, and interacting with others working on similar uh, projects? Of course. Uh, we have a. 30-year marine history. This is our home field. Of course, we want to succeed with what we know best. And by developing this concept together with our partners, we can show the world what we are capable of doing and reducing substantial emissions from the ship and also extending the lifetime of the vessel with a new engine on board. 
Interesting. Curious to see where that's going to go. Um, so, so the product, you make uh, the fully integrated um, fuel cell systems, and you're already mentioned as one of the unique selling points, the fact that there is a very high power density. And, and we've been talking about marine applications here, but I can imagine that that high power density is also, and, and maybe especially interesting for more land-based uh, applications as well, maybe in mobility, maybe, uh, maybe more stationary, what are the limitations there, and, and are there also possible applications on land? Yeah, so as mentioned at the beginning, this system is developed with high uh, standards for marine applications, meaning that we are already following strict regulations at sea, so we can bring this over to land, and we see a lot of synergies for port supply, data centers, emergency generators, but also, one of the projects we are involved in is uh, running a construction site at zero emission. So we, we will go in with our fuel cell container. We will swap out the diesel generator on, or diesel generator at the, that charges the, all the electrical equipment today. And we will ch charge their electrical equipment without any emissions in rural areas in uh, Norway. And this project will be demonstrated already fourth quarter this year. All right, so no real limitations there. It's, it's rather the other way around. By, by working with the, the strictest regulations, you, you are also uh, able to serve the land-based applications. And I also forgot to mention about the mobility part of it. So the, I touched upon the stationary, where we use the same equipment as we use at sea. We bring it on land. We connect the elect electric equipment, charging it, uh, running generators, as you do today, but just without emissions. And on the mobility side, we are currently undergoing a feasibility study to see if we should industrialize a 200 kilowatt uh, module for um, mobility applications such as trucks, buses, trains, mining trucks, among other things. Versatility is key there, I think. Uh, and, and before I open up to the audience for questions, I actually have a very pressing question myself. TECO 2030, it's a special name. And what's going to happen in 2030? <laughs> so TECO Maritime Group comes from the marine industry. We're following the regulations that the IMO set forward there. And the IMO has a goal of 40% reduction of greenhouse gas and CO2 emissions in 2030. Hence, we want to be a contributor for our clients and ship owners, friends, and partners to reach these goals. And substantially increase their energy efficiency rating of their assets. So by visualizing that in our logo and our name, people can see that we are actually taking lead, we're taking charge, we want to be a part of this. And, and then in 2029 is then what's going to happen? It's a little early to say, but maybe we'll change the name to Tico 2050 as there is further uh, reduction goals set forward by the IMO. This, I think this is one of the biggest mysteries uh, in the hydrogen fuel cell sector in the coming <laughs> years. Uh, looking forward to see how that's going to unfold. Uh, the, the audience, any other questions? Uh, if, if you do have a question, feel free to raise your hand. Doesn't have to be now, also can be later. Uh, I do have further questions, of course. Uh, we, we've been talking about some projects that are happening now, and we've been talking about the, the product products that you, that you have now. What does the future hold for Tico 2030? So we're de developing a lot of pilot concepts as we speak, and we want to illustrate a variety of different projects. Uh, if that is retrofit, new build solutions for the shipping industry, port, port and short si shore power solutions, um, but we also want to be a contributor to the larger shipping container vessels, tankers, by switching out the auxiliary engines on board so they, the ship can propel in the last hour into port, lay in port, first hour out kind of approach uh, without any emissions and substantially um, reducing the local communities, the sh coastal communities, reducing their emissions and increasing health in different regions around the world. A noble cause and a good cause, I think. So, so that's the future for Tico 2030 specifically. It's now day three of the fair. That means you've been walking around here as well and you've been seeing a lot of, of market developments, maybe some trends that you have found out. 
what are the most um, the most impressive things you've seen, or the most interesting market developments that you you can distinguish from from everything we see here? Um, we see a lot of. <laughs> it's a tough question. Uh, I mean, I haven't had the chance to walk around too much, as uh, been busy with doing our own thing. Uh, however, I have spoken to some people where they're looking, exploring opportunities, and what is cool to see is that a lot of people are approaching us with various projects, and we're happy to contribute with customizing, tailor-making a uh, project for a potential business partner and uh, client by coming in at an early stage and shaping their project with our standard product. Uh, the product is the same. It's two products, one stack, one module. And we can use this for a variety of applications. Um, and when it comes to what I see the most is a lot of politicians, regulators that want to learn. They are here to learn. Uh, they want to talk to the experts. They want to see what's out there. What, what can we do? in order to shape the future together. Yeah, hydrogen is here to stay, and that much is clear. So uh, yeah, if you, if you don't know about it yet, you have to, you have to get yourself educated, especially in, uh, in such roles, I think. Um, OK, so you already mentioned uh, you want to get in at an early stage in projects. You have a booth right there, D20, on the Norway Pavilion. Who are you hoping uh, to find at your booth? After this talk, you're going back there. Uh, who, who should join you there? Anyone who has an interesting project that we can contribute to. I mean, if that is a retrofit shipping project, if that's a new build project, if that's a land-based project, our um, 400 kilowatt module is very, very scalable. We can scale up to multi-megawatt sizes with a very low footprint of the system. And I think we know the people that you need to know in order to, uh, to um, succeed with your projects. And, and if you see if you see a business potential with us, or if you see opportunities that we can be a part of, in order to help yourself succeed, we would love to contribute. We would love to contribute. I think those are uh, some great closing words here. Um, so once again, if you are interested in continuing this uh, conversation with uh, Tico 2030, your booth is located at uh, D20, right there in the Norway Pavilion. So make your way over there, and I'm sure they can help you. Uh, Christian, thank you so much. It was a pleasure. Um, please, a warm applause for Christian Skaya. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>